Hey guys, thanks for tuning in today. Um, this video will focus on two things. Introducing the new feature uh, to the market profile, uh, the initial balance, and going over the whole indicator as it stands, all settings included, um, the ins and outs, just so everyone can understand how to use the indicator itself. Um, just for a heads up, this video is more for beginners, but I would say that you should pay attention and stick around for the whole video even if you are a market profile user, just because the settings are, of course, something that I've realized that a lot of people aren't necessarily using correctly, or they just have some questions, or even there's some advanced market profile traders who, because they aren't used to using um, this indicator, they're still not familiar with all the settings, even though they're really good with market profile. So please stick around, and um, this will explain everything to do with the indicator itself, um, and I'll, I'll get into the new feature, of course, as well. Um, I'm just happy to let you know that starting this week and going forward there will be some regular videos so once a week um, and not just indicator updates some of these videos will include updates uh, from me about the indicators of course and how to use them a little bit but i'll be happy to say that uh, kr trades will be joining me um, to start covering more advanced concepts especially with the market profile uh, if you if you've seen that we're partnered together um, on the btc market profile.com and use code space on btc and you'll get a discount there uh, on the more professional course because obviously he's he's been around he's been doing it for a while um, so he'll be covering some market proper stuff on this channel which is great news um, because you're going to get more uh, explanation as to what you can do with the profile itself um, I'd also like to thank uh, Bybit uh, in this video and going forward they're going to help keep the channel uh, updated and it's great to have them um, involved with this so feel free to check them out. I'll include their link below. I'll be trading going uh, going for. I'll be trading there. Um, so it'll be great to see more of us over there in general. Okay, so whew, a bit of a mouthful. Um, you might hear me drinking some uh, stuff in the background, like water and stuff. So I don't like you know pass out. And that's not water. <laughs> um, anyway, let's get started with uh, the initial balance. So I do have some things listed out because there's so many settings now. Um, it's crazy how far this has come. Um, so I, I'll be like referencing my notes uh, just to keep keep track of it everywhere where I am. So initial balance, what is exactly initial balance? So I'm going to start with the updated setting uh, just because I'm, I'm sure some of you have followed through and you just want to know, okay, what's the change? What's new? And you guys will move on and can do as you please. But I do recommend sticking around for the whole video. So initial balance is essentially, essentially, essentially um, the first hour, especially for crypto, where the market open. Um, so this is essentially the first two TPO prints and this will plot out the high and low and you can see that plotted here with these dotted lines. Now the reason this is represented differently um, is because it saves space in the PineScript coding backend. Um, their backend has a limited amount of UI functionality and as a result um, I thought it made more sense to use this one as a plot as opposed to a line like as these are. Um, so it's drawn in this way. Um, and I will make it so you can customize the styles later, but for now uh, it's dotted and I think it's very clear this way. Um, you can already customize its thickness, um, but as it stands, um, this is how it's displayed. And this initial balance is, in my, important, in my opinion, very, very important uh, for use. And I'm glad that it's finally here because it adds that little bit of clarity uh, into the market um, for whether we're gonna be trending, whether we're gonna be range bound, and stuff like that. So initial balance, uh, being that it's the first two TPO prints of the day uh, for cryptos, the first hour from the open. So when you see that, one, there's two things you actually should keep in mind. The size of the initial balance and whether we've had a failed auction. Um, the size of the initial balance being that, if you can see some of these balance day, uh, balances are actually quite a bit different in size. Now, typically, not always, but typically, the size can re represent whether we're going to have a trending day or whether we're going to have a day where we're range bound. So on a day like this, this is actually a perfect example, you can see that the initial balance is quite slim. The slimness of this initial balance indicates that we could likely have a trending day. And so the way you can trade this trending day is by looking to take the trade on the takeout of the high, for example, or maybe a retest. Um, it's not obviously guaranteed to be a trending day, but in a simple term, you could end up with a trending day based off of the thickness of the initial balance. 
Um, the wide the wider the initial balance means we are likely to have a range bound day and this is a good example of a slim versus range bound day where you can see we've taken out this low but instead of retesting and continuing lower we actually re-entered the range and therefore you can play again to the upside and you can see this actually happen quite a few times on this day so we've made the initial balance with these two tpo prints we took out the low and re-entered now if you were to long and perhaps have your stop at below this low, a bit below this low at least, you could see eventually we did actually play to the other end of the initial balance. And doing that again, we've come back in, and if you did short maybe a retest because you saw we potentially fell on a lower time frame, you don't have to be on the 30 minutes, I will explain, there are some recommended settings and stuff, but I'm just explaining the initial balance for, um, for the purpose of this part of the video. Um, you can see that we actually once again retested the downside of this initial balance and as a result you could have made some money playing the range especially as it's a wider initial balance day um, so it's a little bit more value in playing the range as well that's the first uh, thing i want you to consider with the initial balance the size of the initial balance actually makes a, a difference to how you could potentially play the day um, and obviously trending days as you can see here tend to have a slimmer initial balance the other thing is this concept of a failed auction. So a failed auction is when, let's say we've broken out of this initial balance, we fail to close like out of this range within the first five minutes. So we go out and we close back in. Um, this is considered a failed auction. And what this usually indicates is, for example, you would test the other side of the range. Um, so if you, if you were to, let me just uh, give you guys an example. Let's say this. Is your initial balance for the day. Should we have done this within the first 30 minutes? So we've gotten out and within the first 30 minutes, we're back in. You can take a trade here aiming for that side and the same with the inverse. So if we were to go out first 30 minutes, we're back in. You could take a trade entering here aiming for that side. And that's a very simple use case for initial balance. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was pretty interesting. That's something I should share with you guys as I'm going through the settings. Now, I will leave, let me just quickly check. Yeah, just checking we're still recording. I will leave the explanation of market profile, more in-depth stuff for the next video with uh, KR Trade. He will explain it very well. Um, this is his cup of tea. Uh, if you're British, you know that means a lot. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I, I just want to give you just a brief explanation. The rest of this video, however, will um, focus on the settings in general. Um, I will reference some things like how they're important and how they could be used. Um, like for example, the importance of single prints and stuff. But this video for me is mainly a focus on settings and just a brief explanation as to what it is, um, especially for the new people who don't know much about market profile. Um, so let's go through the settings now. And we're gonna start with the absolute basics and things that we get. I get asked a lot and this is going to regard to time frame and this is actually something when i first made i didn't know the importance of uh, but you get obviously as you make and as you use you get more familiar with the importance of using things in a certain way so let's start with time frame um one of the main questions i seem to get is what is the importance of this time frame and why does it affect the market profile itself so the market profile itself uh, is using time as one of its main components for generating data um, so if you go in the four hour on the daily market profile, you'll see that it looks significantly more different and the values are shifted. The same with the one hour, although not as shifted, um, you can still see that the values are slightly different. Um, and you're probably wondering why. Well, if market profile uses time to calculate one of its key points of data references, of course, as you change the time frame, the market profile is generating data differently because time is one of its key calculation points. So how can you utilize this for use cases well it's highly recommended that you stick with the general settings now I'll write them out for you so you guys can have a quick reference point. Uh, 30 minutes on the daily so this is the most common uh use case for the time time frame i actually missed one because uh, there's a lower profile available uh for users uh five minutes uh on the four hour profile I'm, I'm using a new keyboard, so I'm typing a bit weird. Um, and then I believe it's, yes, yes, exactly. Four hours on the weekly, and then on the monthly, it's about 12 hours or daily. Um, 
and so oh, I didn't really format that the best and put that in line. So what's what's happening here? So the left side is the time frame. So five minutes, four hour profile, thirty minutes, daily profile, weekly profile. Use the four hour, monthly profile. Use the twelve hour or the daily. So let's say I wanted to go on the weekly. I come here, I click weekly, click OK, and I go on the four hour. And this is the appropriate settings for the four hour for the weekly profile. And the reason for this is pretty much what everyone uses. And it's how the TPO accounts work. Uh, easy way to remember this um, is just the division by 48. So daily, you do 48 times 30 uh, minutes, and that gives you the 24 hour range. Um, so that's how I keep in mind. So whenever I forget, I'm like, oh crap, how many minutes in a week? Cool, roughly this. Yeah, it'll be about four hours. And then that's, that's the easiest way to remember. So if you do forget, just reference that, or you can just come back to this video. I'm going to go back to the daily because that's the typical reference point for the. Uh, profile now if you actually did see there you can see on the weekly you can use the 30 minute and you will get quite a lot of accurate data but it's obviously recommended that you stick with the general profile times so what I tend to do is I will open up one chart and then on another chart I'll have just a pure price action chart where this disabled so on one hand I'll have the four hour market profile here on the left side uh, let's see if I can show you guys that easily I'm just trying to make sure I don't show you an indicator that I'm working on uh, you know, what, I'll do it and if something pops up, I'll just Nah, you know, what? I'm not I'm not gonna risk it uh, just because I, I don't want to go through uh, too much cutting and stuff because I've got to update and release the indicator update But yeah, I'll have the four hour profile here on the left hand side For the weekly for example or the 30 minutes and then I'll have like the five minute time frame on the right hand side So if I'm scalping I'm looking at the 30 minute daily profile here and the five minute here I'm, I'm using my five minute as the trigger but the 30 minute as the profile as that's what's accurate for the daily profile um, so let's get back to the daily. So yeah, that's that's exactly how you're meant to use the time frames. Just keep that in mind. And so if you switch between time frames, now that you know that market profile uses time and price to generate the points of reference for the profile, you'll see that the POCs and stuff move around. Well, that's because the different data is being generated. So keep that in mind. I do get that question asked quite a bit. Like, yo, Spaceman, why is it when I use volume profile and market profile it's different values well that's because market profile uses time whereas volume profile doesn't um so volume profile will be consistently with one value as the market profile will be consistent with a different value um i mean it'll be dynamically changing with different values and the reason you'd use market profile versus volume profile in this instance and you're probably wondering that is because volume especially in stuff like crypto isn't necessarily always accurate you might get an exchange that's reporting volume slightly differently for example Whereas price is always reflected on the price that you see. So in this case, you can't necessarily always trust the volume in a volume profile. Now you can use it. I'm not saying volume profile is bad. Volume profile is good in my opinion. But when it comes to market profile stuff, I prefer it just because I know that the price is exactly as I see it. The exchange can misreport the numbers as much as they want, but the value is exactly what you see. Um, to which case, that's why I prefer it. Whew. I forget how, how out of breath I've been getting recently since I've been sick. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm just talking too fast. Um, I'm going forward. Uh, let's go into the next setting, which is quite quite easily mis misunderstood. And it's another basic setting, uh, but something I think is very important to cover is this tick size. So what is the tick size? Well, the tick size is, to, to summarize it, a, a reference to how much data is generated for the price changes in a candle. So if I was to and just to keep in mind, not all tick sizes are the same. Some things do it differently. I'm using it as a one-to-one. -one, so 100 is $100, uh, 0 0.5 is $0.5. So on BTC, I'm putting it as 100 right now and it gives me enough data points to reference. And I'll explain all the tick size in a sec, by the way. And so this gives me all these data points and it's consistent for everything. So this is 100 tick size, this is 100 tick size, this is 100 tick size, this is 100, this is 100, this is 100. And what that's doing is giving me more data for the smaller the value. So if I suddenly increase this to 200, because I need 200 price, $200 price changes for the profile to do its thing, it's gonna give me less data. But as a result, what you may see is that you get more historical values because less data is being generated and PineScript isn't struggling as much to give you all that information. Uh, 100 or 200 is fine. I prefer 100 personally, and it's a little bit more dialed in and it gives me a little bit more of what I wanna see. And that's what tick size is in a general sense. It's just something that you use to control the amount of data points you're seeing 
and it's important that you dial it in manually if you can. Now, auto tick size is something that I've made for everyone and I think this is an incredible feature and a lot of people actually love it. I've had a lot of mobile traders um, they trade market profile on their PC but they don't have a way on their mobile. Um, they're like damn auto tick size is a lifesaver because they can flick through charts and quickly get a reference for what the profile is for the day. And I'll give you an example. So if I turn on auto tick size, you'll see something interesting happen. Just give it some time to load. And you see that some of these profiles are a lot less lot less generated versus others which are quite compact and now the reason for this is auto tick size is using a custom part of my own code which is generating the tick size based off of volatility and this is a useful feature for if you want to switch between coins and stocks and stuff but mainly coins because obviously this is tested for crypto this, this, is, what I'm, uh, this is what I'm focused on um, it, it lets you choose between coins very easily. So if I suddenly went to ETH, you'll see the market profile is generating data for you. If I suddenly went to Sol, you see the market profile is generating data for you. Now if I come back to Sol and I disable this auto tick size, the profiles will be entirely wrong. And what's the reason for this you'll see? Do you see? That's because $100 is almost the entire value of Solana. Therefore, you can't use 100. It's more appropriate that you use something a lot smaller. Let's try one. And you can see that you're getting some data. And so keep this in mind when you're using the profile. Auto tick size is a tool that should 100% be used if you're someone who needs to quickly get a reference to the profile. I recommend it. I use it all the time. If I'm switching between coins and charts, I turn on auto tick size and I flick through every single coin and chart available so I can see what's happening on every coin and get a profile understanding of the day. However, if you are going to focus on a coin for the day, <clears throat> or if you have no interest in doing that, I recommend dialing in your own values for the tick size so the chart can appropriately generate the amount of data that you need and give you a more accurate profile. Cool, so that's the auto tick size and tick size spoken about. So now I'm going to go over another thing that's very specific to the indicator. And then after this, we'll be getting into more of the general market profile settings. So stuff like POCs, the concepts of them, what they do and how to use them a little bit. So getting into it, let's talk about this drawing styles thing. This is very important and very quick to cover. Illustration mode is just a way of seeing the general shape of a profile. It's the mode I use most. Illustration mode will give you a general shape understanding. And in my opinion, that's all you really need for the most part, especially when you have candlesticks to give you the rest of the data. Now, without candlesticks, I do obviously understand you might need some more information, to which case, if you do are one of those people who prefer having the TPO accounts and TPO available and stuff, I have provided that in many different ways. One is high res lettering mode. And as I turn that on, you'll see the lettering should turn on any minute. Ta-da, <laughs> uh, we have some TPO. Uh, now, let me just t change my theme to something a little bit more bright. Shout out to Byzantine General. And you can see the lettering is quite visible. Now, if I go here, I can actually change the lettering size. But that is medium. And what this can be used for is to give you the individual block display of the TPOs themselves. So what these letters represent, so I'm gonna go through the lettering now, um, is that is the time of day where this, this data was generated. So A being the first 30 minute block, the capital A, and going to the next one, B being the next data point, um, and C, D, and as you go down to Z, that means it was formed later on in the day. And this is useful for keeping track of where price was at a time of day. So at what point of the profile, what time of day, did we visit this part of the profile? And that actually, uh, where you close and stuff actually makes a big difference um, for how you could use the profile. So you can actually include show open close and it should uh, generate all the open and closes for you as well. And if you see here very carefully, you can see open and closes. Now I can make this a little bit more clear. I should have made this a, a 
customizable button and do that later uh, maybe white's not the best but actually no it's actually not too bad you can see here that it's representing the clothes and then if you come to the start of the profile you can see the opening with a green one now i don't currently have this on it's not customizable enough for me just yet but i will be providing that soon of course now that's that's your way of getting tpos now you can see there is a limit to this version this version can only show you so many tpos and that's because of pine script uh, data limitations in this neater form because you can see it's perfectly aligned it's very neat and it's very professional looking i have to admit i quite do like this mode i do turn it on and off every now and again especially on the day but i don't use it for historical look back for historical look back i come to tpo lettering and the drawing styles tab now what does tpo lettering do it saves space in the pine script algorithm uh, sorry back end and using the saved space you can actually get the reference of many more tpo days however as you may have noticed it's not so neat in some instances and that's not something i can fix actually i've tried it's just something that you have to deal with um, that being said and you can see the developing day the main downside is that it's also not too neat um, i will be fixing this soon uh, for developing day it's just not a priority the main priority is getting out all the features and then improving the other display types as the most common display type is the illustration mode as most people are fine with just having this uh, line based mode and and by the way high res lettering only works on illustration mode once again it's under illustration mode settings and this mode only works on illustration mode but anyway most people are fine with this and most people just want the features and that's what I'm doing. I'm building out the features and then eventually I'll go ahead and fix everything as I come back. Now with TPO lettering, you see the advantage being that it's got more historical look back for TPO, but it's not so neat. Another thing is it's te temporarily on halt for continuation. So I believe the poor highs and lows aren't colored properly on this TPO mode. But as you can see, it's still pretty good and I will aim to fix this one soon. Um, I did think of some code that I could use to fix it, but at the, at this was added. This mode was added like on the first day, so <laughs> I haven't really focused on updating it too much recently because I've been focusing on the features as I mentioned. Now, let's say you do like the TPOs, but you don't really care about the lettering. We have TPO block. And what that's doing, it should in, actually look a little bit neater, I believe. Yeah, you can see it's a little bit more aligned. Um, so that's the advantage versus TPO lettering. And it also has the historical look back versus high res lettering, but also comes to the same flaws of the current TPO lettering version that the current day isn't too neat. And I'll be working on fixing that soon. I've just been busy with the features. And last but not least, levels only. So what is levels only? It's exactly that. It hides the profile for the less advanced traders. Uh, it provides you still the understanding of what happened in the day. So you're like, you can still see the single prints, which I will be getting into in depth. And you can still see the, the value areas. You can still see the POCs and you can still see the initial balance. But it hides the profile. Maybe you personally can't use it just yet to your advantage or you don't know how to use it. Well, you can still use the advantages of the profile without the profile being shown. So as a result, you get to see the single prints and you get to use that knowledge that there's single prints below. And as a result, you get the advantages from it. But you don't have to use the profile just yet, especially while you're still learning. And honestly, I think this mode is severely underrated for the newest traders. I think this mode should be a good training block, actually. Um, it's a way for you to understand the concepts of, okay, there's some single prints here. I don't really know what the profile is doing, but let me figure out what these single prints do blah 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 it's not too much in your face and it keeps your chart quite clean because as a new trader i do think keeping your chart quite clean is a very big useful thing because you do not want a billion things on your chart and then you can't keep track of what's going on in the day um, that being said 100 percent. once you're ready i do heavily recommend going back to illustration mode Whew, mouth breather <laughs> um okay now let's continue the next setting and last setting before i explain the general mp settings and once again um this is just to get everyone through, let them know how this works. And so they are able to continue and use this to the maximum ability. I love seeing people post in my Discord, by the way. If you keep posting, I do promise you eventually there will be a leveling system um, in the Discord that I will use to give you guys benefits of some sort. Um, I'm also thinking maybe I'll do a Christmas giveaway. So who knows, maybe whoever has the highest level or something will get something as a result of that but we'll see uh, i'm still thinking what i could do that could be very useful in the meantime 
let's go through historical levels. So historical, uh, there's, there's three modes, well technically four. One is no data, where it just loads the current MP as you see it. So you see here, if I zoom out, the MP data stops around here. Um, some of it continues, but realistically the MP data stops around here. And you see these initial balances, that's because they're using different uh, data to plot with. But this is the maximum range for Pine. Without my additional code, Pine script cannot display anything further than this. Um, and that's not a bad job. They've done a good job updating. They've just released Pine script version 5. Well done the trading view, you guys have killed it. But there are massive um, drawing limitations and stuff. However, if you come here, we'll go through them one by one. All data. Well, what does all data really do? All data provides, as I've mentioned, all of these indicator settings in the historical look back. And you can see already how much further that pi has managed to go look back further. It doesn't, sorry, it doesn't currently show the value area, but it does increase the level of look back for the market profiles. So previously we stopped here. Now we've gone all the way back here. Now, if I go from all data to just MP data, you'll see we'll just get a little bit further back and this one's useful in the sense that it gives you just a little bit more reference and as you can see that profile maybe is something you wanted to keep track of here. That's something you needed data for. Well, if you go into just MP data, you've now gone from being stopped here to getting the MP shape all the way back here, but you'd lose stuff like the value area lines to save on some of that data to give you that display. And last but not least, this is my favorite mode and this is the most, the most, the mode that I recommend most um, and I will talk about some improvements that will be coming soon. Um, levels only. And can you see how much further this goes back? Now, the reason levels only is actually incredible is because it provides you with such a historical look back, so much more data to use that if we were to visit a previous range from like 40 days ago, you might not have that data available, especially with the limitations of Pine. So you're thinking, I have no idea what's happening on the historical profiles, but with levels only, Similar to how I just showed you the levels only in the market profile display settings, you still get understanding of, okay, there's a POC here. There's a single print here. There's some excess here. You will be able to see that still without having to look at the profile. So let's say the day trends, I'm not saying this is gonna happen by the way, but I'm just saying, let's say the day went all the way, oh, it's stuck uh, down here and previously, we didn't, let's say we only had these two profiles. Well, levels only is gonna give you access to this POC. Or if we go even further down, you can see like there's data here that isn't even shown on the profile. Like the profiles have been deleted, but we've got access to this data. So if the market for some reason just suddenly went like this, you're not blind. You have a reference to what's going on here. And you know that the profiles printed this data for you to work with. Um, but yeah, that's the big advantage of levels only. And that is the mode that I use. It's genuinely, in my opinion, the best mode and highly recommended for anyone who wants to trade with uh, Spaceman BTC indicators or Spaceman profiles. Um, but yeah, let's, let's go forward. Let's go forward to more of the general settings once at last. So we're going to start with uh, probably the most, in my opinion, the easiest setting to get familiar with. Uh, it's the first of the implemented features. So this is how the market profile started. Like this is the, the yo guys have released something cool and people saw it and they're like, this is crazy. Well done, Spaceman. I was like, thank you. That's um, It's a pleasure to have, uh, have your uh, thoughts there. <laughs> um, but this is what I started with. And this was the concept of naked POCs. So I will break down what POC is now and I'll explain why it's the easiest to get familiar with, in my opinion and why it's massively important that you learn how to use this. This will, honestly, I had people who were just using the naked POC when it first came out and they were like, I'm new to profile or some of them had access to profiles, but they're like having this data on TradingView was awesome. And I was like, when I build out the rest, so they didn't have this, 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 or this, they were so happy. So could you imagine as I've added this, they were even more happy, but that's what I'm saying. The naked POC was so good. They were already convinced that this was exactly what they needed. Um, so that was a big compliment to them from them. So thank you, I appreciate it. Um, so let me explain what POC is. So the POC is the point of control. It's where the market, um, in, in market profile terms, it's where the most TPO has occurred or in general terms for most people, it's it's where the price has hovered around the most. 
and here you can see the developing POC. So the actual POC is formed of a directly strict and thick line, where well, I say developing POC is dotted so you know it's still developing. And that means the profile hasn't ended, so it's still not decided if this is the final POC, or maybe later on in the day we get a lot of action here and it moves down here. So this means the market has spent most of its time here. And if you look at this chart carefully for the day, just for this day, so the day starts at 1 a.m. here. Also, if you see the market, the profile slightly shifted, that's a UI thing. It's not a problem, I did that on purpose. The data is generated from the day, so it's not generating your data. Don't worry, you could check that on the ch change of a day that it's not doing something wrong. Everyone's probably checked that already. I've had a few people DM me like, dude, I'm like, no, just check, watch, watch when the day changes and you will see. It's done on purpose, so it doesn't cover up um, too much of the screen when the day is developing throughout the day at the start of the day. But let's say this is the start of the day and you can see that most of the day, like the POC could have been here at the start and as we've gone down, you can see most of the price action has been around this area. So the profile has determined that the point of control is here. So for traders, for, for very beginner traders, you can see this as an area in simple terms are forming a form of support and resistance. Um, for support and resistance, you typically look for points where the market has traded for a very long time. Well, that's what POC is doing for you. It's showing you because the market profile uses time that the price has been hovering around this point for a very long time. And as a result, you can use it as support and resistance. So now that you know that, and now that it's quite a, a simple concept to, for understanding support and resistance concepts, um, how do you use it and why, what, what is naked POC? Well, naked POC is in my opinion, the easiest way to learn how to use it. And the reason for this is that it provides you the concept of first test, best test, as Cred would say. And if you don't know what first test, best test is, it means that let's say we've got, I'm gonna come over here, I'll draw a support line. Price has made this as support and we've gone away. First test, best test means as we come back down to retest the support on the first test, this is likely to provide you a reaction. So whether it makes a new high and leads to a trend, or whether it just bounces and then comes back down, you can use this as a point of entry for a target higher, maybe to resistance. And now you have made a trade using just the support concept. So naked POCs is the fact that this POC, this POC has yet to be tested. And that is displayed by the fact that the POC is going across the screen. Now you can disable this in the settings. That's one of the great things about this indicator. You can just disable things and clean up the chart as you want. And the POC is highlighted by a different color. So I'll go to someone who has a very easy to see color scheme. Mm, yeah, I think his POC is highlighted slightly different than everyone else. Shout out to Abe Trade. Um, yeah, so you can see his POC is here because naked POC has been disabled, but you turn on naked POCs again. I'm gonna go on to probably KR, let's try chaos. Yeah, that's very beautiful, that's very clean. <laughs> of course, KR provides a very easy to see um, theme with my background, so that works out great. Um, but yeah, this naked POC concept is basically telling you these POCs have yet to be tested. So as I showed you with those lines, on the first test, you're likely to see a bounce. So if you wanted to enter a trade around this region, and as you can see, it actually works quite well because um, the market's hovered around here for quite a bit of time. As we come back to this region, we're likely to get a bounce. So you can enter this trade here and expect some upside. Now it doesn't mean we're gonna start trending, but if you wanted to, you can enter until resistance and then get out. And there you've got a trade. So naked POCs is the concept that POCs haven't been touched and because POCs act as a magnet to price, we're likely to revisit this at some point. And with this revisiting and this fact that it's untested and we can use the first test, best test logic as a form of SR, this naked POC will likely give you some sort of bounce and act as support. The same concept works for resistance. So let's say the price closes here today this becomes the naked POC. So the line looks like this. That's your naked POC. You can expect price to come up to here and reject a little bit at least. And then if it comes up above again and does this, that's something different. But on the first test, we can expect it to form some sort of reaction. 
system and that is the concept of POCs and naked POCs. So I hope that was well explained. I tried to keep it as simple as possible by drawing some stuff. Um, I think that's very useful for a lot of traders. It's genuinely probably one of the best concepts to learn to start with. Um, highly recommended and just wrap your head around that. Give it a few tries. Maybe disable all the other settings. Like disable all of them. Have just the profile or even just levels only and just the POC. And I'm telling you, you will see just you'll see it work like you I, I will actually show you um, some good examples of that so here so this was a naked poc this is levels only historical data it was extending across the whole screen and so what happened was price eventually revisited that as it does um, and once it revisited that on its first test if you entered a short you can see it eventually on its first test went back down and you'll see that happen all over the place. And it, yeah, it might overshoot a little bit. And obviously the higher time frame profiles have a bigger reaction, such as the weekly profile POC will have a stronger reaction on this first test. But you can see pretty much almost always it will visit this region and come back down. Now that wasn't perfect, but it happens a lot. And especially if it's quite long and untested. Um, it works quite well. I highly recommend it. Like you can see here again, it's obviously not always, but in my opinion, it's one of the best things, especially on the weekly. Like if you go on the weekly and you try this, you'll see all, how how useful this really is. Um, you'll see this was a POC that was naked. The market came to test that and not only did it test it, it created a reaction that led to a bounce and a slight trend to the upside and you would have made a significant amount of money of course you might have not hold for the whole thing and maybe you were one of those people who got lucky you did but if you entered here you got a trade that doesn't mean enter every single naked poc use it in line with confluence of other things maybe my other indicators maybe a different indicator i recommend my own but of course you know that's because i've made them so i know how to use them perfectly or well, not perfectly you can't you no one has a hundred percent hit rate um but i know how to use my indicators really well because i made them um and i'm teaching these things so more people can use them better so you don't have to use mine you can use anyone so you can use an rsi maybe you saw a divergence here you can use stochastics maybe you saw this bounce you saw a crossover and you entered or maybe you use pure price action or maybe you use other things but whatever you end up using if it can give you confluence and you can see we're at a naked poc in my opinion it's mostly worth the shot and you might have your own execution style and sometimes you see it execute and you're like damn this dump was quite violent like if we come back here you'll see this is quite big red bars compared to these small in the uptrends and this rejection here you might think damn i don't really want to enter but my style of trading says this isn't a bad place to enter but then you see cool it's tapped the naked poc your usual style of trading just got an extra bit of confluence it's worth taking the risk if your conf if your usual style of trading was to say, cool, this is where I would enter because we're at a point where it could be support. That, in my opinion, is the use of a naked POC. You can use it as a quick SR. Now, I'm not saying it's the only way to use it, um, but it's just an easy way to use it and it's a good way to use it. Now, naked POCs don't become completely useless after they've been tapped, in my opinion. You could revisit this, um, this zone, it's just on its first test, it's best. Now on its second test, it could still provide a bounce. Cred explains this really well. You can have a, I'm pretty sure he said in this video, I watched that video ages ago. Um, you can have a bounce on your first test. And then maybe after each subsequent test, you just get smaller and smaller bounces and maybe we eventually break through. Or maybe we find some sort of crazy bid here and we eventually break out and we make a higher, uh, higher high and we come back to revisit and then we make a trend. Like maybe that's what happens. But on the first test, it's best. On the second test, third test, we eventually lose some strength, but it still can be useful. So do keep that in mind. Don't just rule it out just because it's been tested. Whew, damn. <laughs> I've been talking a lot. Um, I'm, I'm probably ramb rambling now. This video is quite long. Um, but yeah, it's probably the longest video on my channel. Oh, God, don't do that. Don't go to an interval of nothing. Um, but yeah, let's go to... Uh, single prints and explanation of single prints so single prints in my opinion can be very simply summarized as a void of liquidity um, it's where the market just provided a liquidity gap because it reacted to, uh, very quickly and 
created a point at which TPOs are printed as singles. So single print, it's, it's a one TPO print. So let's say the market, good example, there will definitely be examples somewhere. Uh, these are single prints, by the way. These are actually single prints. So yeah, this is a perfect example. I don't know why I scrolled through it. It's because I'm used to my coloring scheme, so I didn't see the colors. I was like, this isn't my single print color, like, because you can customize it. Um, but let's just go with this. So this is your single print. You know, I'm gonna actually show you guys a bit of the customization. Uh, so look at single prints. Let's go to OK. I'm gonna put the single print shading as yellow. Oh, that's god awful, but you know, I just want to show you guys. Uh, let's make it white. So this is white. This is your single print area. So you've come to this region. Um, you've you've you're on your profile, and you see a candle that does this. And the profile never revisited below. This is a region to which price has created an area of single TPO prints. And what this means is, if you see in the market profile, these points here where they're overlapping is creating this arch shape. Well, when there's a single TPO print, it just means that there was a candle that very quickly just rocketed upwards or downwards, but never got revisited. This is a point of low liquidity. Now, in these gaps of low liquidity, the market does eventually tend, not always, but does tend to re revisit these inefficiencies. Um, so what you can use these uh, inefficiencies for um, is actually a target. So in a way, let's say you've got a trade and you've gone short here. For whatever reason, you're you're the best trader on earth and you've shorted around the top and you know, <laughs> you're like, cool, I've, I've got to have a target for something. What you can target are these single prints, these these areas of low liquidity because the market tends to fill them. Now you can test this, I'll show you how to test this. Actually, I, white is probably the worst color because it's the same as my excess coloring. So let's go back to blue. Um, so you, you, you've you ended a short and you want to target something. You can target these single print regions, maybe not to fill the whole thing, or maybe you want to fill the whole thing as your, as your point of taking profit. Because if the market tends to fill that and you're up here, and you know that the market tends to feel that the market is likely to then go for this region so you can close some or all of your profits at this region giving you an area of an idea of where to go for your target now i don't recommend that as your only way of targeting something obviously you use support and resistance if you see a fuck ton of support here and you see single prints here might be worth closing some here and maybe some take like take profits here and closing the rest here um, just as the market wicks into it or something um, but yeah, that's single prints. That's the easiest way to use it. So what is naked single prints? Well, naked single prints is an easy way to keep track of all the liquidity that hasn't been filled. So if you can see this slim down and actually extended, well, that's because the market actually had visited part of the single print today. So that's perfect timing. And as a result, these single print regions got smaller. So I'll turn it back on and you'll see it's slimmer. It's below there because the market actually came to fill part of that. Now, it doesn't always do this, but it can actually provide a small area of support and resistance sometimes. I've noticed that. Um, obviously, not, not not as, in my opinion, as much as like a POC, but it does happen sometimes. Uh, when revisiting it, it might like move away for a bit before coming back to close it out. Uh, that's something to keep in mind. But just to keep that in mind, that naked P SP might make some of these SPs look smaller, but that's because the market's actually filling that. So the naked SP concept that I've added here is to show you areas where the market hasn't visited it and will keep the the SP there and gradually shrink it as the market visits it and then cl close it out and get rid of it after it's been fully closed. So if you see here, there's a lot of single prints, right? We've got loads, this, 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 this. Now if I turn on the naked SP, you'll see that one's a bit vanished. Why has that vanished? Well, if we come back, and show this as a what am I using this? I could use a box with the box tool. Here it is. If you see that as a naked SP would be stretched out like this, but then the market came into this. And if I turn off naked, if I turn on naked SP, it's been deleted. I added that on purpose so people can see where there's voids in liquidity that have yet to be reached at all. Um, and it's very useful, especially. When, when you're like, oh damn, I don't want to like go back and draw this box out or I don't want to keep in mind this because I'm looking exactly here. Well, you've got the naked SP, so you know, cool, this one's already been visited by this part here. Well, this one hasn't been visited yet. Maybe we, some reason, although Bitcoin seems quite bullish right now, um, we are at an area of supply. 
some reason we break down, you can keep in mind that this area has yet to be tested. And if you had it off, which I, I do think some people do, um, and that's fine, um, you wouldn't necessarily be able to know that straight away. It's just a naked SP lets you do that. It's the same with the naked POC. It's untested. It's an untested region of liquidity gaps. Whew. Okay, so value area now. I'm coming to the end of this, by the way. So uh, just stick around for the end if you want to know the rest, or you can uh, sign up today if you know the rest of this, because obviously value area has been around for a while. But I'll go into value areas, access. Uh, I've already explained initial balance and just coloring really quickly. Okay, so the value area is typically where the market has traded throughout the day or the profile. So if you've got the weekly profile, typically where the market's profile uh, has had most of its activity. And this value can be represented between 68% and 70%. Um, I, I've made my profile 68% because one, it's where I've seen that it's working the most. Uh, for me, it's not too big of a difference anyway. Uh, but two, I spoke to a lot of older flow traders and asked them, would you prefer 68 or 70? I will make this editable in the future but I just needed some input and they unanimously, and I mean genuinely every single person, I don't know if there's a reason they all agreed, but they, every single one of them said 68% is what they preferred. So I made it 68% and I've had a lot of people compliment me on how accurate these value areas are. So that's a big po positive that you know it's working. Um, so what these value areas can do is it represents the most market activity. And as a result of that, what you can expect is if we've broken into a value area region or if we're in, in our developing day value area it works better on a higher time frame maybe i can show you a good example for going to weekly i'm going to keep it on the 30 minute uh just to show you make it easy to show uh yeah here yeah, here's a good value area you can see that this is when most of the market activity happened and i guarantee you uh the market profile had developed this value area quite early on but then you could have used this as a range play so as we broke down from this at the time would have been a developing poc once we re-entered you could have entered here and played the range um, because the market tends to chop around these regions. Um, so now that we've entered the value area, you can use it as a range play. It doesn't mean you have to, but you can. Um, you can target, let's say you've entered the value area low, uh, you sweeped and you came back up, you can target the value area high. It's so similar to playing the range with the initial balance. I'm not saying it's the, they work the same, but obviously you can play the range from the low to the high, the high to the low. Um, and so yeah, that's where value area is coming and this setting is just for showing the value area turning it on and off so if you turn it off you'll see that the value area should eventually disappear or is it not <laughs> oh wait it might be historicals let's turn off historical value areas or has this frozen oh there we go it's just generating it took some time um, you can see the value areas are gone and the historical value area lines are gone so you can turn that on and off i don't recommend turning it off keep it on um, it's value area lines especially are very important um, in your profile trading Whew. going forward with basically the last feature that's been recently implemented um, once again if you want to find these by the way go to spacemanbtc.com um, you'll find that there's a, a whole section of indicators so the, mo the profile tools uh, this is the original one uh, it's depreciated but I do offer it for members who ask it's not the best this one <clears throat> It's the fully fledged one. There's a free one called uh, Space Time Profiles Regular. I just need to update the website. It's got a different name now. Um, and these features have actually changed. So there's these two have been ticked off now in the, the, the advanced market profile tool. And it's no longer coming soon. Um, whereas if you are interested, I have other indicators such as the Delta Profile, the Delta Print, and the Delta Ladders. Uh, this is to give you some form of order flow footprint analysis on TradingView. Um, and there'll be more indicators coming soon that aren't flow related at all um, and i think these indicators are going to be very useful so if you do want to come on and uh, try these indicators out just come visit spacemanbtc.com uh, the links will be in the bio i have some free ones as you can see here um, and I'm mentioned here but the main ones are obviously the premium ones and i hope you guys find these useful come back to it uh, last setting being excess so what is excess um, this is something i actually kind of had to teach myself again um, and very useful actually uh, I, I had some mis, uh, misunderstandings and I've improved upon that and added it in the profile I didn't actually have it as part of the profile before because I thought it was very easily visual, uh, visible but I realized as you're learning new uh, ha having it very easily distinguishable is very very helpful um, so I've added that in now and that uh, is very useful because uh, excess uh, similar to single prints is a single print of TPOs on the profile However, what you'll notice is 
excesses have different shading um, and that's on purpose. So let me just find the excess. Let's make that red. Let's make it green. We're going to make it green. And the reason for this is because they actually provide different use cases. So with a single print region, you'll see that the market tends to fill these inefficiencies um, as a form of filling up the liquidity gap, right? Single prints work differently to excess because excess, although it's a print of single TPOs, it's at the edge of the profile. Now, what does this mean? It means the market very quickly has to just draw something. I love drawing apparently. Um, the market came up and quickly came back down and created this one line, uh, this like reaction of a pullback. If you can see here, this is actually the perfect day. I like how there's been a couple of examples just from the past two days. Um, the market reacted violently to this region. And that shows you an increase of sellers at this point. It shows strength of selling, or if it's at the bottom, the strength of buying. So we can believe that as the market is created this area, should we come back here, the market will likely, at least on the first try, reject. Because this is highlighted that there was quite a violent selling area, especially because of how large this excess can be. And so we've seen that there's a strong amount of selling in this region. We came back up here again, and if you can see pretty much by the end of the day, we kind of rejected straight away. Um, this would have probably been a larger excess, but we came to revisit it. So this would have, at first, the profile before the rest of this day had formed, the excess probably would have been this whole thing. No, it would have been this whole thing. As we came to revisit it, you can see, cool, the market was like, okay, cool. So not all of this whole area was the excess. And then as we've come to close it out, this is the final excess because the profile is closed and we reject it pretty much straight away. So should we come back here, we can expect some sort of reaction um, and likely to reject. Not necessarily mean to start a downtrend, but we're testing supply. We're visiting an area where there was proof of selling at that profile. So we're likely to test if there's actually selling and should there be such strong reaction, we can expect a pullback. Um, the same can be said for this demand zone here. Um, we come back here, we test this zone, we can expect the bounce. A similar thing actually happened here. We came to this zone, we tested it, you can see some wicks were starting to form. We slightly rejected but were saved by the value area high and created this trend up. Um, this is actually a great, great zone. So you can see we created this excess region. This excess region led to some wicks and eventual rejection. But this value value area high, which you can oh actually never explain that you can use it as like extension play. So if you broke out the value area high, um, and then we retest the high, we can use it as a trend play out. And if you see something actually very interesting, we've broken back into this value area high of this profile, but the initial balance is what kept us hovering. Henceforth, the use of actually having the initial balance as well as the value area for your confluence. Um, but yeah, so we got save on this value area high. Then we made this new initial balance and then as we broke over the initial balance we were bound by this value area high saved by the initial balance again and we started trending um, but you can see here this test of supply provided some sort of pullback and the same we can expect with this not always but likelihood of we come back down here should we ever come back down here we'll bounce again anyway that's pretty much all of the features of the market profile as it stands there are some future features to add and some optimizations to do should I optimize, I'd like to add one of the main features that have been requested for a very, very long time, which is free sessions. The Asian, the Europe, and the New York session being used as profile sessions. So currently it's based off of four hour, daily, weekly, and monthly. But I would like to consider adding in the sessions such as the Asian, Europe, and New York. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm very, very tired. <laughs> I'm still sick, so this was actually very, very tired, tiring. I thought I was getting better, but I somehow woke up like sick again. Um, but yeah, for coloring, just a quick one. Um, these are themes provided by users. Um, some of my early users, actually, these guys were some of the first few to try this out. Um, and obvious stops one. So on custom mode, this is how it loads for everyone. So you can just quickly edit it and make it as ugly or as pretty as you want it to be, whatever you want to do. Um, you can see the profile will change look entirely. Look at that, beautiful. What a work of art, a work of art. Let's make the value area something random. Um, Let's make that light blue. Yeah, 
beautiful, incredible. This looks god awful, and that's why we're gonna go to obvious stops because he won the competition. So at the time I held a vote, uh, maybe I might redo this vote soon um, for the default profile. And as when you load it, you can change it because it's in custom mode. But the default colors are obvious stops themes, but there are many themes. And shout out to all these people. And as you go through these themes, you'll see like your colors change. And it's just to let you quickly switch for a theme and find what you want to want to use for the day, um, or not for the day, but for your chart because your chart might have a certain background color, so it doesn't match with my default settings. Um, so you can use someone else's. Um, anyway, that's basically what the themes are. If you change them here, it doesn't affect anything while you're selected on someone's themes. It's hard stuck to that theme, but as soon as you go back to custom, it will load up the random colors that you've set. I hope you guys enjoyed. That was market profile and space time profile advanced settings explained. Uh, once again, big thank you to Bybit. Please check out the links below for either Bybit, btcmarketprofile.com or spacemanbtc.com. Spacemanbtc.com to get access to these indicators. And um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll chat to you soon. Bye.